What's up guys, welcome back to a new episode of Is It Imba or the Suck. Today we have a replay that's sent to me by the Great Bolt. Let's have a look at it. Hello Harsam, I'm a friend from China. We all enjoy your IO this series so much. Here I want to share you a replay where I lost to a Protoss on Korean server. I was in a good position through all the game. I got better economy, larger army and higher level in weapon slash armor tech before the final battle. But still I lost the game. I thought I have done everything I could and got defeated just because Tos is Imba. Could you please look into the replay and decide whether it is Protoss to Imba or I suck? Regards. 4.7k on the Korean server. That's very close to GM. I think that's Masters 2 maybe. So we're getting some, some high level players from the, the Chinese community, the Great Bolt, who uh, who wasn't so sure, you know? A lot of the time you get people that are very sure that the opponent is Imba, but Great Ball was more, it was a question. It, was, I, it felt like I'd done everything, but maybe I'm missing something. So he isn't quite sure about himself. He's lacking some confidence in his claims, which, no, I don't like. I like when people have confidence in their claims. The, the more confidence they have in their claims, the, the nicer it is to shut them down. But let's have a look to see if Great Ball is actually that great or if he's just a bit bold. Gonna have a look. He starts with an SCV skull, which is always nice at any level, of course. Just making sure your opponent is doing what your opponent should be doing. And what does he see? He sees a Nexus before core. And he sees a wall that. I don't think this is actually a wall. I've seen some walls in my time, but I'm pretty sure the Reaper can just jump up here. The Reaper might even be able to jump up here and then just walk through here. This is an absolutely terrible wall. I hope the Great Bold realizes that. Opening just looking standard. Solid, standard, nothing wrong with it. Throws down his mule, gets his Reaper, his Marine, plays barracks before gas. Yes, absolutely fantastic, great bolt. So far, this is indeed the perfect game. And we might be looking at an imbalanced replay here, my friends. We might just be, this might be the first one. So far, people keep asking me in the comments, hey, has there any time been anything imbalanced? And yes, in the third episode, um, I got sent a replay by Nimzobu and Nimzobu thought that Protoss air was in balance but when we watched the replay we actually realized not only did Nimzobu sucked but also the unit composition that he was playing was in balance so he was playing Swarmos Nidus so not only was his unit composition in balance he also sucked um, so we pulled a quick reverse on him so that happened one time now we're gonna see if today is gonna be the second time and hopefully without the reverse. Maybe Protoss is actually too powerful. Now we're seeing a factory being built on the other side. And it's getting very close to this barrack. So I think he might swap them. I'm not a massive fan of this build. For the simple reason that... Um, it, it's going to hit really late. Right? If you play Hellion builds. Most of the time I prefer playing them either from a gas first. Or playing them from a barracks before gas with a marine. Because then your your Hellions finish at like the 3 minute mark. Right now they're going to finish at 327, 328. Well, they should finish a bit faster. So I think he messed something up. But they're going to be finishing rather late. And your whole push is going to be very delayed. You see the opponent is building a wall. Which is he's doing a good job at that. Tech up well, this, this third gas. Why is this so early? This smells a bit like mech. To me. Um, which is it's 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 possible. We've seen TY do it a couple of times. It's just not as popular. Okay, we're gonna be going into Cloak Banshee. Now keep a look at this gas. Yeah, a hundred gas has been mined so far. Let's see when this gas actually becomes useful. It's always important to see in your build order, like hey, did I actually need to take a gas that early or would I have been better off spending the minerals somewhere else? Now, moving across the map with four Hellions and a Reaper, the trick you can do is you bounce the reapers out of the wall or the, you bounce the adapts out of the wall with your reaper and then you run by just throw a grenade boop, and they move out of the way and there you go um, the protoss opponent is building a robotics facility and phoenixes so we'll be able to most likely pick up all of these hellions so hellions completely useless at this point um, we see our terran player floating 400 gas look 200 gas comes out of this one. He's, he still hasn't dipped below the amount of gas that was mined from this refinery. So, so far it hasn't been useful at all. He's following up with an eBay. Keeps his Banshee at home and gets a Cyclone. It's a very old early game. 
His build order is... Of the Terran seems extremely bad, honestly. Okay, here we go. Now we're going into mech. The eBay was, I guess, just for turrets. So he must have spotted that there is a Stargate here. Observer making its way across the map. Um, Banshees should move across the map. Like, usually what you do with Banshees in PvT is you send them in the moment you have Cloak. You don't actually wait for two. I think that's usually bad and a mistake. Like, the real power of Banshee is send in one over here, and then once that one is fighting already, the second one comes in over here, you know? Because if Tos has detection, like, if they're ready, they're ready for it most of the time. They're going to be ready for one, they're going to be ready for two. So actually waiting for two is something you do against Zerg. Not something you do against... Pro what? What is he doing? Double eBay before extra bear like Okay. Alright, alright. Let me let me just pause this real fast here and let's just have a look at this situation. So he built two eBays before the extra barracks, meaning his stim and combat shield are going to be extremely delayed. On top of that, he's getting mech field accelerator, which is an upgrade you get when you're doing mech, or a very dedicated push onto the third. Sometimes you can still follow up into bio, but most of the time this indicates you're going into mech. Then he builds three banshees which also makes no sense you build well it makes sense with this because his barracks are so late might as well build a third bench but two banshee then you usually swap with the barracks third cc i like but the two ebay before barracks is insanely greedy this build the only reason if he's gonna get ahead after this is because he was extremely greedy like it's not normal to play like this you should not normalize this kind of behavior uh, he's gonna be able to get some damage in with these banshees, which is a big deal actually. Um, observer gets recalled. I see extra observers being built. Now, good start for the Terran, honestly. Good start for the Terran, except he's floating. Well, he was floating 700 minerals. Um, he decided to add a couple of extra barracks. This is the. Six racks is not a thing, right? It's gonna be five racks and then seven racks after. Six racks he is building because he, you know. He forgot the macro for a bit. In general, he's been forgetting the macro a fair amount. We've seen him float a lot of money all the time. There's only one guy in gas here. Third gas has been absolutely useless, by the way. That could have been taken way later. Um, like, together with the extra gases, would have given you more minerals and thus faster production. Now, the harass going back into the same area. You know for sure there's going to be an observer here. I'm not a big fan of it. It is going to work out. But that is more because of the Protoss' incompetence than because of the Terran's brilliant harassment. Um, actually, it does got a level damage. It's gonna be so far ahead now because his 1 1 is done already. His opponent doesn't have a single upgrade. So, I'm not saying this game is over, but if both of these players were of equal skill level, then yeah, this game should be pretty over. The Cyclones are going to be doing absolutely nothing in this unit composition, so just wasted like four, 450, or so, sorry, like something like 800, 900 resources, including the mech field accelerator, um, on these two Cyclones that actually won't contribute whatsoever to this army composition. But I don't mind getting a Cyclone or two if you know you're playing against air, but the way that the Great Bolt went about it, I'm going to be real. I am not actually a fan. I don't. I don't think it's good. Now we see no turrets yet. Um, one turret here, no turret on the third base. So it's going to be losing well, absolutely nothing, which is nice. And the pros also has some interesting ideas about micro, but he didn't send in the replay, so we'll let him go. I'm actually surprised that the Terran is going to be losing this game in the end because I have no clue how that's going to happen. His 2-2 is starting before the first forge of his opponent is even done. There's two factories on the way. What? Ghost Academy, six racks, two factories. He's not producing out of three of the racks. Four of the racks are not producing. This factory isn't producing. Like, you don't actually need more production structures, my friend. What you need is to, to use them. Ghost Academy. I'm extremely confused as to what's happening the proper way to play here for the terran would be to just get vikings from two starports five barracks then do a push with two two um plus one air like 
mm, 10, 10 vikings and maybe 3 ghosts. You're gonna be maxed when you hit 2-2 if you do it properly. Off of 5 racks double starport. You're gonna absolutely destroy your opponent. Like, it's not even gonna be close. If you did the same amount of harass, the same amount of damage as he did in this game, imagine hitting at 2-2 with, with just 10-12 vikings and, and a maxed army against a guy that's 0-0 or maybe perhaps he has 1-1. One, one. But you get 3 ghosts, you get 12 vikings, you're just gonna destroy him. You gotta just walk over him. Toss is getting 4 robles in total. Uh, Toss also isn't really playing the same game as I am. Fourth base is a little late, slight oversaturation on this third. But I mean, he's, he's macroing well at this point. To be fair, absolutely nothing is happening. Um, okay. He literally has zero map vision. I doubt he even knows what his opponent's army composition is. Doesn't know there's extra gases yet. All he knows is that there's a couple of adepts on the map. It's not a single marine on the map. Um, no sensor towers, no no map vision, no harassment, no attacks. Even though he's been ahead all game long already, look at the timing. A 2-2 timing is here right now. Um, see, 2-2. But he's not gonna take it instead. Just waits at home. Just chilling about. We have 6 medevacs. We have nothing to deal with Colossus really. 41 marines. Um, now, I think that this army, if they would be clashing right now, would still be able to win. Just purely because he has so much money. And he has ghosts, or so much money, so many units, and so many ghosts. And he's still up to upgrades. Like, he's going to need to seriously botch a fight here, I think. In order to for this game to get even s slightly close. Now, let's have also a look at how he controls army. We see everything is in the same control group. So ghost, tanks, uh... Everything basically is, is in absolutely the same control group. So, decent start of the fight. Now, you want to keep fighting near your tanks most of the time. Um, and, and split your marines a little. Push them more into a line. But yeah, usually you want to just siege up your tanks. And then keep fighting near your tanks. While still producing stuff. We see some big floating going on right now. Um, I'm not a massive fan of continuing to fight at this point. As one tank still on the back. So I think the initial fight on the ramp wasn't too bad, but then afterwards you should keep getting your tanks there with your main army. Because honestly, if you're just fighting marines and six marauders, even against just two couple side, you're going to be having such a difficult time uh, killing your opponent. If you don't have any EMPs, you don't have any anti-air, like, Marines just die, like, Colossi are the hard counter to Marines. Then there's a bunch of Immortals. This is actually a really sad way to die. Let's also note, 3-3 hasn't continued building, so it was actually going to be a 2 2 push, but just a pure 2 2 push, nothing else behind it. Now, if you're fighting against just pure Stalker Immortal, you can pull the SCVs. Basically, the moment you realize there's no more Zealots around, because SCVs actually tank a lot of damage from both Stalkers and Immortals, so you can actually survive it. If you pull SCVs from both bases, you let the Mules do the mining for a bit, I actually think he would have been able to still hold on here. Now, it's going to be a little bit harder, right? This opponent has a Prism here, um, his, his 2 2 upgrades are done, so somehow the Protoss went from being down 4 upgrades to being even, in, a, in basically within 4 minutes. I think the Terran might still be able to stabilize here. If he if he does this well, it's still a possibility, honestly. There is four Colossi on the way, though, so it might be a little bit of an issue. And now the, the, the triple tank action might actually come a little bit in handy. I love that his reaction to losing 25 workers in the past 45 seconds is throwing down two more barracks. Because the thing that he really needs at the moment is extra production. Like, mate, the thing you really need right now is to be producing from all of your structures at all times. You don't need more production, you just need to be using your production more. Tanks on the way, okay. Another big micro error is fighting the Colossi while your tanks aren't seized yet and not shooting. So the way you want to do it is you just run back with your bio. So you they kind of just kite back. So you get chased. Piimba? Oh no. Great, bold. Imagine playing a tank base style and fighting without your tanks. 
every single fight. Just consistently forgets to GG as well. Great vault, great vault, great vault. <sighs> oh, 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 great vault. All right. Great vault. Let me talk to you, my friend. P. Imba, you said. You weren't sure if it was P. Imba or not, but your words in the game uh, don't leave a lot to the imagination. Let's put it like this. Your early game was fantastic, even though your build sucked. The way you executed was terrible. Your third gas was too early. Uh, Hellions didn't do anything. Your Banshees kind of got damaged uh, sheerly by luck, not so much because you controlled them in such an amazing way. Um, double eBay, P4 extra barracks, triple gas, Macfield accelerator. I don't think so, my friend. That's not the way you're supposed to play. Um, as a follow-up, you were up like literally 40 supply, four upgrades. You decided to do absolutely nothing with your advantage, not a single drop. Even though you were doing nothing on the map, you were consistently floating somewhere between 600 and 1,000 minerals. Your production was way too big for for how much you, money you were making, and still you managed to float. Um, your composition, you can play three tank stuff, but the important thing um, is, it is a very odd concept, and I want you to pay very close attention here, is that if you make an army that consists of tanks, it's really important that you also fight within the range of these tanks. Now I understand this might be a little difficult for you to grasp, but it, imagine it like this. Imagine you have some 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 pain in your knees, right? Some pain in your knees, and you you go to a, a shop to buy better shoes, and you test new shoes, and you uh, you know you a long time of research into the shoes. And after, you know, three, four hours, you find the perfect pair of shoes. You take those shoes home. And then for your next run, you just use your old shoes again. That's what you're doing. You're building a tank army and you're not using them. Like, why build the tanks then? Just, if you only want to use bio units, just get bio units. Probably would have been better this game. Just go Ghost Viking, Marine, Marauder. That's completely fine. But you wanted to get tanks. You wanted to get fancy. At least, the least you can do is fight in tank range. You get that great ball? Just, just write it down. Write down in your little notebook. It's like, good advices by Harstam. Write it down under, don't take a third gas um, before I build extra barracks. Don't get double eBay. Don't get Macfield Accelerator. Three Banshees. I don't think so, my friend. We'll stick to two. So overall, honestly, you didn't play too poor. You know, you... Well, well, actually, the only thing you really did was you killed a lot of workers with the Banshees. That's really what got this game so far ahead. Um, wait, what the hell? I'm seeing something that I completely missed during the game. You forgot combat shield. No wonder your fights were going so poor as well. All right, mate, you're out. You suck. You suck a massive amount. I suck a little for missing that you didn't have combat shield. But you really suck. I can't believe you dare to complain about this game without having combat shield for 14 minutes, forgetting 3-3, the worst build order opener in the world, world's most terrible micro, and not fighting in tank rage. Get out of here. All right, see you boys next time. Thank you very much for sending in the replay, great bot. This gave me great pleasure. And uh, see you tomorrow for a new YouTube place. Bye-bye.